Hi guys and welcome back to World of Tanks and it's that time again, it's another time to uh, see me suck even more than usual at World of Tanks with World of Fail and we're up to number 8 and I'm in the Scorpion, the tier 7 American Premium Tank Destroyer it's a tier 8 match I'm trying to drive through a Tiger 2 and it's Corellia Encounter now my plan is to head up around maybe D3 something like that possibly um, and try and cover the guys that go up that way and try and uh, you know flank around that northwestern corner however not many people seem to be going up there so I'm just wondering where to actually go and basically I decide to you know instead of going up there and supporting them I decide to make my way up there on my own and try and possibly set up somewhere that I can use my binoculars to, you know, to basically out spot anything coming the other way. And fingers crossed and deal with it before it can even see me. But how often do these plans ever go right? Now, a hammer. And there's another tank destroyer and another heavy tank that have been spotted up there already by that white tank that has been very, very brave down in the swamp. And the good thing about the uh, the Scorpion is that it doesn't take much to actually hide your hull. It doesn't take much of a, you know, a change in the uh, height of the ground to hide your hull uh, if you know if you use it properly. And I'm kind of poking up over here a bit too much, I think. I just want to be peeking over, and again, possibly a bit too much. And I take a hit in return, and it damages my gun, which it normally does if you get hit in this you're generally going to get your gun damaged if you're using it, you know, this way. There's not much else they can actually go for. And, uh, yeah, he's done. Uh, I don't think, no, I didn't kill him, somebody else did, but the kill's a kill and he's gone. Now, there was a tank destroyer and another heavy. It's a Tiger II this time, so I'm going to back off. And there's a Chaffee down in the swamp. Can I get a hit on him? Hello, Mr. Chaffee. Yep, and his engine's damaged. And there's Artie. Yep. And that's the downside to the Scorpion. One mil of armor, so if they hit, they will pen and they will do full damage. Anyway, <coughs> here I am in the T95 E2. It's on airfield and it's another encounter. And this time it's a tier 8 match. Now, I'm going to head up towards the middle. I've got a feeling that the way the team are moving, most of them are going to go, yeah, straight round towards the cap, which is not a good idea particularly because there will be a fairly strong force coming this way to try and flank round. It's what normally happens anyway. And that's handy. One of the artists is done already. There's a tiger. I can get some damage on him. No, he's ducked back. And I'm not doing too bad. I am bouncing. My tracks are absorbing a few. Although I did take it from that tiger. But where I've managed to get tracked is actually uh, not a bad position, really, for bouncing shots. So, yeah, not too bad. I prefer a bit more backup up this way. Although it does look as though the team are sort of filtering through now. So, this one started to look as though it could go alright. And you'll probably notice that my throat is a lot better today and I sound a lot clearer and I am feeling a lot better and my nose is a lot clearer. Uh, well my sinuses are anyway, just got a bit of a rattle in my chest still but that's about it. Now, these guys are sneaking around the bottom and I thought I'd come over this way and use that gun depression and shoot down into them but yeah, we've seen this before, haven't we? Um, it, well, in fact, it's in my intro. Yes, I go over a bit too far, slide down. Don't kill myself this time, but put myself in a very, very bad situation. Take a hit from the uh, the Oni there. Damages my gun. <laughs> well, I put one into the Challenger. I've got to basically try and get away. And I did kind of panic a little bit. Although, I didn't really want to back up too much. I was trying to get around, and then I thought I'd use the Challenger for cover. But my MRX has been taken out. I already used my repair kit and 
yeah, basically, big mistake, and I'm done. Right, next one. Now, this one, was it a tier 8 match? I didn't quite see them in the T233. And I think for those of you that saw my last World of Fell, I think it was in the last one, I put that match on where we actually won. And I was saying, you know, is, is this a win? Is this a bit of a team fail? Because it, it sort of... I don't know, we seemed to win. I'd barely done anything and ended up coming top. And, uh, you know, it was a couple of guys managed to get into cap after most of our team were wiped out. And... I, was, I just felt that it, I'd not really earned it, if you see what I mean. And, you know, the team, I don't know, it kind of felt as though it wasn't earned. But you guys said, you know, win's a win. Fair enough, you know, I accept that. However, this one, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I know you said a win's a win, but I'm going to have to mark this one down as a mega team fail. Um, with the Himmelsdorf one, basically, you know, the team put up a good fight, but half the team got wiped out, maybe a bit more. A couple of guys fought the way to the cap, went into cap, Possibly trying to split the enemy team or draw them back, that sort of thing. Maybe even trying to cap out, seeing that basically we were getting hammered because I think the enemy team had only lost like one or two tanks to, uh, you know, the sort of just over half of our team. So, you know, they went and capped. And uh, for whatever reason, the enemy team couldn't get back to reset the cap. So we ended up winning. You know, fair enough, fair play to them. They won the match. Uh, like you said, you know, wins a win. I was being a bit fussy. However, with this one, well, just wait and see what happens. And uh, I, I think I would still firmly say that this is a, a bit of a team fail, all in all. So I've come over to the eastern side of the map on Heilbronn. And I was looking at the spread and I thought, I'll pop across here, I can sit here... Maybe some of the other tanks will come past me. I can give them a bit of support. If not, hopefully I might be able to spot anything. And I'm in a fairly good position to sort of pull back. Use my gun depression and, you know, shoot over this rise that I'm sat on. But looking at the map, sort of the, the spread of the team is quite poor. They're all clustered around the middle and spreading over towards... Well, they were spreading over towards the east slightly. And there is nobody down in the west apart from one medium, an RT, and... Uh, there's a few tanks coming through the town now. There was a, a medium there. There's a, a heavy coming down there. And I'm pretty sure that as soon as you see that there's a, you know, just a medium on there, uh, down, well, down there on his own, anybody else that's in that town, sort of easing the way through cautiously, will just rush down and sweep round that way. Now, I do know as well that there's only a limited amount that I can do in this tank on my own, and unless, you know, the rest of the team get down there, or, well, not the rest of the team, sorry, a few more tanks, were going to be stuffed. And, uh, yeah, I was then looking at, at the uh, capture bar at the top of the screen and thinking, really? You're doing that, are you? So they just went straight for cap. They've dived in there, and they've stubbornly refused to move from out of the cap and just decided to cap out after doing... Well, nothing. In fact, most of our team did nothing, and uh, quite a lot of the enemy team did nothing. And I have, actually, uh, left the results on this one, just so you can see. Yes, that was my daily double. I was not very happy at all. Three penetrating hits, because that's all I had the time to do. Thanks to those guys going and just thinking, well, I'm going to sit in cap, look at the scores, look at the enemy team. Look at our team. Look how many people did zero damage on our team and the other team because they didn't have chance because those guys, and I'm sorry, those guys went and did something just stupid and idiotic in my opinion. And you might have thought, well, you know, that's fine. It was a win. But no, to me, that was just, that was idiotic. And I think that as soon as they saw that it was going to end like that, that we were basically going to win with nobody actually doing anything they should have just done the decent thing and at least two of them got out of the cap and just left one in there to give people a chance or you know surrounded the cap and held it without actually being in it if you get my meaning and I did actually go through a lot of these guys just to show you some of them never even got a chance to fire a shot so yeah I would say that's a team fail and I did have to show you that because I just that was 
a frustrating game and I'm sure I wasn't the only guy in that game that felt incredibly frustrated in fact more than frustrated just a bit pissed off with them to be honest but if they like I say if they wanted to do that surround the cap hold it but don't actually sit in it until it looks as though we're going to lose you know like then get in the cap or whatever but no doing it that way yeah anyway it happens you just have to move on to the next game don't you right so this is it I don't probably wasn't the next game uh, these are a bit out of time but this is the Ripper and it's Himmelsdorf winter and uh, I think it was a tier 5 match yeah I'm pretty sure it was so I'm going to go for the hill the Ripper's got good gun depression not a particularly good gun um, decent enough rate of fire but yeah not a very good gun in general but it has got fairly decent frontal armour I think it is um, I actually was under the impression it was a bit thicker than it is but I think it is only 64mm but it does have a better slope to it than the M4 and of course this is tier 5 like the, uh, the normal M4 Sherman but it does have a, a better slope to the front so you do tend to bounce a few more shots than an M4 would and especially again when you're using that gun depression and I can already tell you what my mistake is in this in this map and uh, yeah it's going up the hill on my own I really shouldn't have done that I, I did expect at least one other person to come with me up this hill and I knew they weren't so what I probably should have done is not even bother and literally just turned around, gone back, and tried to hold the position further back so that anybody that came up and over this hill would come down, and then I'd be closer to the uh, other tanks on my team. And you know, if they did see it, they'd be able to react quicker. I mean, up here, you know, they could see that the entire team was up here, but they're not going to get up here before I die. So that's probably what I should have done, and not carry on up here on my own. But again. You know, you do these things, you, you make mistakes, you learn from them, and hopefully you won't do it again. Although, I just seem to. Um, so I missed the, uh, was that an M3 Lee trying to get across there? We've got a 3001H. And uh, it doesn't seem, you know, some tanks are quite good at firing on the move. The Ripper doesn't seem to be one of them. And there's a Type 91 as well, a little Tier 3. Japanese heavy. Now I've got to be careful of that 3000, there he is, 3001H. I think there's something like, is it 50mm of armour on the front? This doesn't have the best penetration on it, I think I want to say it's around 90, although it should get through that and it is doing. So it's not too savage. I'm actually, well I was trying to damage his engine, he's, he's obviously going for the ram. I did manage to set him on fire slightly. And now I'm just going to try and put them through there and hopefully beat his rate of fire which I did which was nice and now the M3 Lee's coming to have a go he's bounced oh that one penned and again just got to keep my fingers crossed that was very lucky that my gun took that one and there's the type 91 and I was trying to pull back so I could spin my front towards him but never mind he was more than likely firing HE uh, although I didn't actually check although it did look a little bit yellowish so I would have said HE on that one anyway I think this is the second to last fail and we've got a good match coming up for you and I'm in the T34-3 it's uh, Swamp, an encounter and tier 8 I think it was and I'm going to head across to the northeastern corner i just like to go that way a bit more in mediums I can get there a bit quicker and there's a lot of small hills and undulations in the ground that mediums can take advantage of uh, better than a heavy could you know using them for cover and trying to move around and flank and it, it just I don't know for me it just seems better over this side for mediums than going down the other way which seems to be I don't know I think it just favours heavies down that side a bit more a bit more open um, you know they can take the hit well generally take the hits a few more whereas up here, like I say, you can sneak around uh, a medium in the ground now. The light tank can ask for some cover, and I wasn't going to come up this way, but he asked for cover. He's going out spotting. Nobody else went, so I thought, do you know what? I'll go and try and give him a bit of cover. I should have pulled back. And I should mention I'm training a crew up in this at the moment as well, which is why no sixth sense went off. 
but as I pulled up onto there to provide him cover, he buggered off. I got hit, tracked, had to use my repair kit, pulled back, tracked again, and that's me done. And that's what I kept for trying to help. Again, these things happen. Right, uh, this is on the Xbox actually when I was doing the labour review. And I'm in the labour, surprisingly. And it's Scorpion Pass, and I think, was it a tier 9? Well, it don't matter anyway. Scorpion Pass. And it's an encounter as well. Now again, I've noticed that everybody is just heading straight for the cap. Nobody is covering the rear. So if the enemy team decide to send maybe three or four tanks up this way, they could just plow straight into the back of our guys and do quite a bit of damage probably before they can actually react to it. You know, it's not worth sending half your team this way or two thirds your team, but it, it is worth sending a few tanks around on the flank because you can pretty much bet that somebody on the enemy team will be thinking the same thing. And I thought, you know, since I'm on my own, I'll just wait here. I'll wait here, I've got the ground that I can use for cover. I've got a fairly good view um, for spotting, you know, there's not much cover in the way. The only thing that might hamper it is if they come along that ridge line, there are a few rocks that could probably hide my view, but I, I get a bit bored and impatient and decided to move in. And yeah, spotted one, spotted two, and everybody spotted me, and there is shells coming in from every direction. And yeah, I decided to try and pull back to get back up the hill, which is possibly not the best idea. But it's just one of those things, you make a decision on the fly and sometimes it's the wrong one. What I probably should have done is drop down into the riverbed and tried to get below some of them and drive back up the riverbed because it's in a canyon. But these things happen, like I say, and you just got to learn from it, haven't you? So next time I won't do that. I'll just wait and stop being impatient. Anyway, this is the last video and this is the, uh, oh well, hopefully you'll agree it's the decent round. I'm in the Tiger 131 Tier 7 German Premium Heavy Tank. And uh, yeah, well, I did my Tiger 131 last, was it last Monday? I think it was. Um, so, you know, my opinions on this thing, I quite like it. It's uh, 100 mil armor on the front of the hull and the turret, 80 on the sides and rear of both. And it's got a, an upgraded version of the, the short 88, which is on the, uh, the VK3601. It's one of the guns on the normal Tiger, the Tech Tree 1. It's on the uh, T-3488 and uh, I think the VK-3002D possibly has it. Uh, and they get 132 uh, average penetration and 220 damage. This one however is upgraded, it gets uh, 169 pen, still 220 damage, but it does get a better rate of fire as well at 10.9. Uh, I can't think what it is on the normal one, I want to say it's about 9.5, something like that, uh, on a standard short 88. So it is nice to have that upgraded uh, penetration on this, that slightly upgraded rate of firing as well. I mean, it, it was a decent rate of firing in the first place, but having it upgraded, yeah, I'm not going to complain. And I, I, I think I said before, I do prefer this to the hammer, and even though the hammer's got the, the more powerful gun, with, you know, higher pen, uh, slightly higher damage, this has got a slightly higher rate of fire, which I don't know if it quite makes up for that. That 20 less damage, I don't know, but this does have the, the bigger engine, the 870 horsepower engine of the Tech Tree Tiger, so it's got that increased manoeuvrability over the hammer. And that's just why I prefer it. A lot of people will prefer the hammer, and that's fine. <laughs> I just prefer the manoeuvrability of this uh, over the hammer. I just, I'd rather drive the Tech Tree Tiger than the hammer, to be honest. Plus, that and the, the hammer, well, it's not the nicest looking tank, is it? Right, so I'm going to get across this bridge, try... Can I get that capture KV-1 from here? Nope, not quite. Now it's an encounter battle again. I'm not having much luck with encounter battles recently. Although I have had some backup come down this way. I did, again, think I was going to be on my own. But there's a, a medium that's come down, there's a couple of tank destroyers covering from the ridge, so... It's not too bad. And we just finish, finish off that comet. Now I'm going for this T-150, I've got the side of his turret. I get another hit? Yeah, oh, that was a low roll. That would have finished him off, so I'm going to have to take another hit at him. 
And I was going to go for the uh, the tank destroyer, but I thought no. Get rid of the T-150, eliminate the gun. And now let's have a go at this uh, SE-100. And uh, he gets taken out by somebody else, possibly the medium that's across there. Now I was going to say, I'm pretty sure I'd seen another heavy tank and it's an IS. And if I can just sneak round on him. I've got to be slightly careful on this uh, left side. And I possibly shouldn't have tried to flank around this way. Because now I've been detected. And I've started taking hits from my left somewhere as well. The IS has tracked me and whatever it was just managed to get me in the side of my turret. And then Artie hits me. Takes my gunner out. There's the Hellcat I was shooting at earlier. And I, I really should. Well actually I was going for the ramp which is why I just locked on firing. But then I thought you know what screw it. Just shoot him. Now I'm not sure. But I've been spotted again. And it said that I was being looked at. So the only thing I can think of is that that was Artie maybe. But I didn't think it. the detected thing went off when Artie was looking at you. Uh, so I'm not quite sure what that one was. And that's why I'm looking around because I thought there was somebody up on that hill to the right. There normally is, or well not normally, there quite often is somebody up there. There's only one route from either side that you can actually get up to it from. But there is quite often somebody up there. Managed to finish off the artillery and we've got two more arties, two more heavy tanks. Now RT are going to be somewhere between here and possibly the uh, the number two spawn. They don't normally move too far. Well unless they, uh, they have to because they've got a short range like Bert. But there we go, there's the M44. No, he's ducking back down. Oh, there's the grill out. Let's take him out. Oh, slightly high roll, but not quite enough. And yes, I do realise that if I was in the hammer, that would have killed it. I know. Yes. For those of you that were about to say. Um, but yeah. Managed to take him out anyway. And uh, that KV-85, he was... Yeah, he's got to have been AFK. The last art has been taken out. And now it's just a heavy tank left. And I think I have a look to see what it is. And I want to say it's a captured KV-1. Yep, it is. And it's at this point that I actually did consider the possibility that it might actually be up on that hill that I was on about that I was looking at before. And that could have been possibly what was looking at me. And he maybe couldn't get his gun down. But then he pops up on, uh, on the map over there. And I'm just thinking, yeah, I don't think I'm going to get there in time to actually do any more damage and it, it looks like it's pretty much over anyway because we're also capping out so yeah it's a definite victory it's just whether he'll survive and it looks like he will so that was quite lucky for him he had a lot of tanks closing in well, there you go quite a decent round in the Tiger 131 I do like that tank I think it's uh, good fun definitely and that wasn't too bad at all 84,900 uh, silver 2,727 damage done, a uh, high calibre, a devastator and a top gun as well, so I'm quite happy with that. And only a second class mastery though, so there must be some people doing very, very well in it. Um, yeah, very well. Well, well, 1,500 XP though, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think I've had a, a mastery with just a tiny bit more than that, but obviously, like I say, a lot of people doing very well in that one. But there you go, I hope you've enjoyed tonight's World of Fail. Hope it's given you a laugh, and uh, I hope you enjoyed that last match as well. And as always, I'll be back tomorrow with another video. So uh, for now, take care of there, and I'll catch you next time. See you later.